Hello everybody, and welcome to the little show that I do that I make up as I go along. It is October in 2018. Uh, we still got, a, a Trump is still president, and we still got about another two years before the United States elects another new president. Uh, so here, um, today on my little show, I'm going to be talking about the top ten list of people that I think should vote for uh, I, the top ten list of people that I think should be president. Okay, and the, then the top five, the top five people on, on my list are people who I've already voted for 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 real in real life that I've I've actually voted for them for president. Okay, uh, number one would be Robert Lazar. He's a guy that he claims back in like, like I think, 85 or 86, he came out and claimed that he used to work at Area 51 at uh, uh, on a, on a site out in the Air, in Nevada desert where they uh, he claimed to be reverse engineering crashed alien spacecraft. And uh, he, he came, he says he, he claims that with his research on back engineering the alien spacecraft, he created an element called Ununpentium. And this element was used in a machine to fold the fabric of space. So if you wanted to say, say you wanted to go to Mars, you could go get in this little machine and in an instant you could be on Mars because here's Earth, here's Mars, and the machine just folds the space and then you get off your machine and then it goes back to normal and you're on Mars now because, you know, you step into your machine on Earth, the machine folds the space between Earth and Mars, and then you step over to Mars, and then when it goes back to normal, you're instantaneously on Mars. He claims that that's what Ununpentium allows the machine to do. So he was a, yeah, that was a thing. That, and he claims that because he came out to the public and spilled the beans about everything, that that the government has erased his life on paper, that no one could find out where he actually came from or if he even really exists because there's no records of his schooling or, you know, even back to grade school, they, they erased all the records of his grade school and high school and college and universities, you know, because he, uh, yeah, because he spilled the beans on what was really going on or so they claim, you know. It's, no one's ever going to really know, but that's who Robert Lazar is. And, and I actually did vote for him for president one year way back when, you know, get a little drinky of water here, cotton mouth going on. Okay. Yeah, so I think Robert Lazar should be president someday. Number two on my list is a dude named Stanton Friedman. And uh, Stanton Friedman is also some sort of nuclear physicist or whatever, and he has lobbied the government year after year after year trying to de get them to declassify documents involving Roswell, New Mexico, and all the other types of uh, you know, alien sightings or what's really going on in Area 51. And he also is a debunker of Robert Lazar. He says, Lazar has probably worked out at the base, but... He thinks that that Lazar is a disinformant. That he's he came out publicly to say this stuff to redirect your attention in one area so they could focus on, on doing stuff without you looking at him. You know, that's what uh, Stanton Friedman is saying. Even though I really would have voted for Lazar, but you know, Stanton Friedman is also a guy who is trying to declassify documents that are secret. You know, of nature in the UFO business and what's really going on with. You know, Area 51. Okay, that's that guy. Uh, number three, Richard Simmons, the exercise guru. You know, I figured uh, that he could just, you know, go over to Iraq and say, we're going to we're gonna sweat and we're not, you know, we're going to, we're not going to fight anymore. We're going to sweat. You guys don't have to fight anymore. You know, or we can sweat down the national debt. Yeah, they, you, know, you know, we got a high national debt. Let's sweat it down. Come on, everybody. Let's sweat. You know, Richard Simmons, you know. Sweating to the oldies. And he kind of, you know, he was just kind of a funny little thing that I could say he could be president, you know. No, I actually did vote for him. Uh, let's see, number four is Giorgio Tsoukalos. And he's this guy that is on the History Channel, and he has a show called Ancient Aliens. 
And it's all about the ancient astronaut theorist <clears throat> that him and a bunch of other guys, they claim that long time ago, maybe 10,000, <clears throat> 20,000 years ago, that ancient astronauts from another planet, whether that be from Mars or from another uh, star system in the galaxy, I don't know, they came here and found the uh, <clears throat> found the humanoid primates or whatever, and they altered their DNA and taught them science, and you know, re responsible for gi giving them the technology to build the pyramids, and you know, you know, evolve into what we are today. You know, that that's the whole ancient astronaut theory. It's a really good show. I, I love watching it. And, I watch it every Friday. It's a, they have a marathon all the time. It's really great. Now I actually did vote for that guy. I'd hope hopefully someday like to meet that guy and get one of his little gold flyer pins that I could put on my shirt. And he's he's kind of a cool guy. Uh, let's see number five. Oh, okay, number five. Hang on a sec. Ah, better. Number five is a guy. I do believe last year, or maybe the year before, they, uh, maybe it was before Trump was elected. Yeah, it was before Trump was elected. They <clears throat> they did a profile on this guy on the History Channel claiming that he was D.B. Cooper, the guy who hijacked a plane back in the day and jumped out and got away and they never found a body. And, you know, his name was Robert Rackstraw. And they did a, you know, a profile on the History Channel and, the, the guy was a kind of a wise guy, you know, so we're never going to really know if it was him or not. He, uh, it looked pretty convincing as to <clears throat> the things they said that he probably could have been him. It was pretty good, at least pretty convincing to me. Uh, but, the, but the FBI has cleared him as a suspect, so they're not focusing their, uh, uh, focusing their energy on trying to pursue him as a suspect anymore. Even, even though the evidence they had in that show was really, really convincing. You know, so that's that guy. You know, those are the top five guys I have actually voted for president before. <clears throat> you usually have <clears throat> a list of four or five candidates for president when you vote. But there's also a box that says, write in. You can write in a name and put the little X on that box and you can vote for that person. <clears throat> So I've, I've written in these names and voted for them. Okay, that's the top five. Now let's go on to number six here. It would be comedian Dave Chappelle. Uh, Dave Chappelle is... Why do I think he would be a good president? Not only because he's funny, but because within his within his humor, he tells the truth. He don't... You know, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't sugarcoating nothing. He's telling you the truth, man. He's... And he's ex ex extensively funny. I, he's, you know, great guy, great attitude. I think that maybe he could be good at being the president. Uh, where are you? Seven is uh, seven is Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo was the guy who played Hercules on the Hercules Legendary Journey series back in like the late nineties. I do believe it was maybe early two thousands. I don't know. But, the show went on for a long time, and then he went on to be on a... Uh, the heck show was he on? He was on a different show after that. But <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking Kevin Sorbo would be a good president. Uh, we're going to look at number eight. It would be a gal named Allison Arngrim. And she played a character on a show in the 70s called Little House on the Prairie. And her character was Nellie Olson, the little bratty girl that always was trying to get all, all these other kids in trouble and she was really uh, conceited and everything always backfired on her and they always had a life lesson to be learned about that but yeah she played Nellie Olson on Little House on the Prairie and her, <clears throat> her name was Allison Arngrim and yeah I was thinking maybe she'd be she just she's still doing stand-up comedy today I think I don't know where at but I've you know I've never seen ads for her she does sometimes do stand-up comedy where wherever the heck she lives I don't know Okay, number nine would be John DeLancey. At least I think that's how you spell, pronounce his name. John DeLancey. 
Uh, he he played Q on Star Trek: uh, The Next Generation. You know, he's that he was that sort of a alien that always harassed Captain Picard. He even he even uh, came in and harassed Captain Janeway in Star Trek: Voyager, and <clears throat> he was just kind of a <clears throat> alien that thought he could get around. You know, you know, he was immortal, could never die, and he had all un unlimited powers that he could do basically do anything. He all of a sudden he could bully around these starship captains and just kind of a schmuck, you know. But I think uh, <clears throat> John DeLancey could be a pretty good president, you know. I don't know. And number 10 on my list is Dave Mustaine. He's the lead guitar player and singer for the band, the heavy metal band of Megadeth. Uh, he's always been pretty political in his music, uh, in his opinions. He's, he's always been a pr pretty political kind of, you know, guy, and he's kind of a great guy. I really like his attitude and personality. Kind of a good guy. Okay, there's my top ten list. <clears throat> Let's do one more little water here. Okay. Okay, and also, the <clears throat> one of the reasons why I write these names in is because I truly do believe that they would be better than some of the retarded candidates they have in there for several different reasons, because... The, the candidates that you vote for are basically just a show, you know, that it's, it it's all involves attention redirection, that the real government goes on behind the scenes where you, you look at Trump and what he's doing, but the real government's over here doing things that you don't notice, you know. And he's just, he's just there so you can <clears throat> basically to be a fall guy. And uh, also the fact that there is such a thing called the, the uh, Electoral College or something like that. I think it's uh, basically the only <clears throat> there's uh, only about two or three people in the state who vote actually counts for president. Now, if the rest of the people in the state vote for a per certain, certain candidate, those three, two or three people can take popular opinion or they could form their own opinion. And forget about what popular opinion is. See, that makes your vote really not even count. They don't care. There's only two or three people per state, depending on how big your state is, that the vote actually counts for president. They don't have to listen to what's popular. They can make up their own damn mind. And, and so none of us, none of us, you know, none of us really matter. So I vote for somebody like, somebody like Robert Lazar because they don't, they don't give a shit, you know, <laughs> And uh, that's basically it for today. My top ten list for presidential candidates for uh, whenever the hell we elect another president. I don't know. Probably a couple years from now. Trump was still in the White House. Okay. So before I go, I'll do my little sharing thing. I don't have a whole lot today. These here are little, uh, you can see them here. They're, they're icy straws. They're, they, you know, they go like, in, a, in like your Slurpee, only it's called an Icy. And he's, they have the little polar bear on there. And I've collected these two. They're pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> All right, here's another thing. Uh, this is my BMX racing jersey that I had when I was a kid. Uh, I mentioned in a different video, I'm really, I was really into BMX when I was a kid and I'm into BMX. Well, I'm into not. I don't ride BMX anymore, but I'm into, uh, you know, I'm into just looking at really cool BMX bikes on the internet. And yeah, and this is my BMX racing jersey from SE Racing. SE Racing was the company that produced the uh, produced the PK Ripper. They also had the Quad Angle and the OM Flyer. They had several different bikes, but the PK Ripper is the best bike in my opinion the best bmx and this is the se racing jersey that i had when i was a kid and you know, i had this when i was like <clears throat> 15 or 16 and you know don't fit into it now but it's still kind of a pretty cool thing to have yeah okay so that's about it for today so thanks for tuning in and <clears throat> if you want to if you feel like liking and subscribing and and leaving a comment or anything if you maybe inspired you to maybe vote for somebody that you might think is better than the bozos they put on 
the candidate ballot for real. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all just fun and, fun and goofy, you know. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all later. Next time I come up with another weird, weird video. Thanks.